All right, hello. Today we're gonna show how to make this mushroom explosion thing. We looked at uh, planetary annihilation to get the inspiration for this guy. So, probably break it up into a few parts. We'll do the shader graph part and the animation part and then the script part. Um, shader graph part is definitely gonna be the most intense. So we're on 18.2, uh, just came out yesterday. So we can get cool vertex displacement. Oh, we'll also need to go over creating the model. Maybe we'll do that first. So this is the model. Um, more or less the easiest way to do is start with a cylinder and then get the general shape and then subdivide it and then use the sculpting tools here to smooth stuff out. Okay, you want your seam. Obviously, I have to have a seam along the side, unfortunately. If we could get away with not doing that, it'd be great, but we can't. So to get your UVs looking all perfect like this, um, just select everything. Select everything, there we go. And then we'll go up here to modify and unitize. So basically that cuts everything into its own square and puts it here. So everything is detached right now. We've got however many different faces. We got 3,000 faces almost stacked right here. None of them are attached to each other. So what we're gonna do here is unselect everything and then we'll go select our uh, edges that we want to have, our edge loops, or our seams, sorry. Select the edge loops where you want seams, that's what we want to say. And then what we're going to do is go to invert selection up here. So now you see we've got everything else selected. Uh, I didn't take that one down there for some reason, but that's okay. Then just select them all. Whoops. Okay. Then just do move and sew edges. So now we've got this and this and this. And then we'll just lay out those guys. So now you can see that's more or less just how we want it. The reason we have it broken up into three parts is because we want this UVs to be going over this way, right? But we want this one to be going up, up into the, you know, the, the bulb of the explosion. And we want this one going down. Right, so this one's going backwards. So it's, if we did it just scroll, we're gonna utilize a scrolling texture for this. So it's gonna scroll from the top down. And so if we scroll it from the top down, this middle part here is going the wrong way. So we basically find this one and we just rotate it around. Pretty easy. And then another thing we're gonna do here is just scale these guys over so that um, it's tileable more or less. Something like that. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but since they're three different pieces, it, you could even put them on top of each other and it would look fine. But that is more or less how you get the, the model and the UVs set up. Cool. So we'll bring that into Unity here. So this looks pretty complicated. I will do my best to explain it. So the first thing you do, you start with a Veroni. Um, thing. The reason we're doing that is and not doing a custom texture is because the vertex displacement position node doesn't take custom textures for some reason. So we're using one of the built-in Veroni. You can use a noise one too, but I think Veroni looks pretty neat for this. So basically what we're doing here, this whole thing is getting it to, to move, right? We've got a custom property here, scroll speed, up here so we can adjust our scroll speed whatever you want. You need to make sure that's a vector 2 because it's going on the X and Y. So if we move this one to point 1, it starts moving a little bit to the side. See that? Or if we do it 1, you can really see it. But I don't think, that looks kind of weird on an explosion in my opinion. So I just want the one texture scrolling. Also another thing to note, you're going to have a funky seam here, but just look the other way. Alright, then we've got time. So what we're doing is we're multiplying time by this scroll speed number. So basically time is making it move, but the scroll speed's making it move faster or slower because we're doing only point 0.2. All right, then the tiling and offset fed, fed into the UV of the Verona is actually what's doing the tiling here. This is just telling it how fast we're going. So we're going this fast on the offset. And the noise intensity, this is uh, the tiling of it. So we've got another uh, custom property over here. 
So we've got it how many times it's going across. So if you make it bigger, you make it, you know, you scale it up or down or whatever. So you can get a more intense explosion or a more, however you want your explosion to start looking, you can just mess with that a little bit there. Okay, so then to get the kind of bulbous type of thing, we're going to invert this guy. So just do an invert colors node and just invert the red because you can't invert the others. And then we're going to blend them. You could do a multiply for this too, but I just blended the same thing on top of each other. And that's just to make it darker. And then you might ask why we do the contrast, but the reason for this is to get these blacks a little more black. Because if we went straight to the contrast, it might look a little funky. You could probably do it, I just chose not to. Alright, so we got our contrast here at 0.6. I think it looks good. If you raise it up, you could raise it up, fine. Just to add a little more. See, it just looks flatter or whatever. I think it looks good at 0.6, but that's just me. And then, alright, so we got our blend here, which is blending our color, which is in an overlay. I'll get to that one in a second. And this is all just feeding into the albedo, which is just the color map of your, uh, of the thing. We'll just delete this emission one for now so you can see a little easier. So that's more or less what our colors are looking like. Okay, so up here, We've got this cool gradient node. So I just have this gradient. It's like a brownish color to a blackish color. And so it's taking time. So we've got a... I'll get down to that one in a second, probably. So this is explosion time. Yeah, we'll get to that in a second. So we're take, feeding in a time. So over time, this gradient changes from brown to black. And I've got a little slider down here that I'll... I will show you this, don't worry. We feed this guy in here, and you can see the it going over time. So we go from kind of a brownish to a black. Okay. So that's the basic color one. Um, let me talk about the vertex one real quick, because it's pretty easy. So more or less, we are changing the height of the vertices here. Okay. So we start with position, which just takes the basic... Um, normal positions, like here, looks just like that, and then we go in and we add something to it, okay? So we're adding stuff on the on the whites and not adding stuff on the blacks. So we go here and we're multiplying it by a noise height parameter, so we can make it higher or lower. This, if you make it too high, it starts to get really weird, so we make it really low. You see even point 0.1. I'm not exactly sure how this node works, but I know that it looks good, so... So we make it 0 0.01 to get a little bit of noise going there. You can use the same effect for like a waterfall or whatever too. So we're just multiplying this by this noise height and then feeding it into the add of the position. So we're just adding this noise height to the position that's already there. And so then we get this neato kind of scrolling thing going. Okay, so that's the position and the color one. Now for the emission, this is kind of a neat part. We're taking this, we're replacing the color, we're making... So with the replace color node, what you're doing is you're adding more of a certain color. So we're going from white to white still. But what you do is you add this range, so when you make it like 0.1, it doesn't take as much white, right? And if you take 1, it adds a ton of white, which is not exactly what we want. So you find something there that you like, and then the fuzziness too, like, it starts to make it fuzzier or uh, blend a little differently. So you can mess with that to get what you feel is what you like. And then we've got this replace color node, which is kind of, I mean, it's the same thing. It's the same node, but we're going black to black, just making the blacks more more intense. So we've got a more, you know, rigid line there. If you don't like it, you don't have to put them in. But I think it look good. Okay, and then we got a blend here. We're blending in. We're just making the whole thing darker. That's basically what that one's doing. And then this one is blending with another gradient. It's the same way. So just so you know, gradient nodes don't go to anything except for a gradient. Um, this one, except for this node, they don't go to anything else. So that's the only way you can use them, is just over time. But basically over time it changes, the glow will change color from this to this. That's how we do that. And then it's just an emission. And uh, just a multiply node, just multiplying this one with this one. So that's pretty... Uh, so I use a blend here so you can adjust the opacity here, but if 
you want, you can just use a normal multiply node just like this one. And that'll do. Should do the same thing because my opacity is just a one. All right, so our alpha. Okay, so this is this bottom mess of stuff is just doing the the fade, the dissolve thing at the end here. Okay. So as, the idea is that as soon as the red disappears, or like just a second after, it starts to fade away. Which is a pretty cool effect. Maybe I'll explain this now. So this slider guy, this is our overtime. This is what we're gonna change with the script. I have it here in a slider here, explosion slider property, but you can't um, adjust the slider in this editor. So I have another custom slider here that you can do here just to see how it's looking. Okay, so then you set your min and your max. So you want your min and your max, you want want your min to be zero and your max to be four, or you want your max to be the same as your explosion time up here. And this is where our explosion time comes in. It's in our in min and max. So we've got a couple of remap nodes here. Might have another one somewhere, but. So what a remap node does is it takes it in and, in, and then it spits out something different. So say we've got a zero to 100 number, and we're taking that in, and we want to convert it to a zero to one number. So we are in min and max is zero to 100, and then our out min and max is zero to one. And these aren't necessarily min and maxes, you can put them at one and zero. I think I might have done that over here, no. But yeah, there's not, it's not necessarily min and max numbers, it's just range of numbers. So what we're doing here, so our explosion time is a vector two, right? So we've got zero to four. So it takes four seconds, or four units, to do our whole explosion, okay? So we've got our slider going from zero to four. And our explosion time at four, which is what we want to do. And then our remap here, we go from zero to one. So it's remapping this along the four seconds to this value, the one to zero, so that we can get this gradient from zero to one along those four seconds. I don't know if that makes sense, but just do it, you'll probably figure it out. So we got that same thing going on up here, right? We've got this zero to one that we just remapped from our time node, or for our Meyer. So we're feeding in our slider from zero to four. Our in minimax is zero to four, and our out is zero to one. So that's exactly, I hope it makes sense. If it doesn't, you can figure it out probably. So then we've got this one going the same way from zero to one. So go over the four seconds, it'll change from you know, the brown to the gray, and this one will change also. And you can see it from the slider. Okay, so that's what the remap ones do. That's doing the same thing down here, really. Okay, so let's start with this one here the alpha. So how this works, the alpha is, you know, the transparency. So if we turn on um, transparent here, you could see that it's kind of transparent, which might be cool for some, but I don't really want that. And it's taking the transparency based off of this guy. Okay, it's hard to see because there's so many colors going on, but it's looking at this and the white is opaque and the black's transparent or vice versa, I don't know. All right, so we've got the same kind of deal going over here. We've got a scroll speed and a time. It's the same thing that I've got up there. And the tiling and offset and the speed and whatever. Uh, then the dissolve fade scale. This is just the scaling of the noise. So this one, I've got it at 30. You can change it to 60 or whatever you want. I think 30 looks pretty good, so I left it there. I think that's the default also. And then that's going into our alpha. So it's just a scrolling alpha thing that we're thinking about how fast it's going to fade. You can line it up with this, but I thought it looked better with a little bit different kind of noise rather than just the, you know, the circles. So I kept it there. All right, now this one is alpha clip threshold. So what it's doing is it's getting a number or a value. And if it's above, if this alpha is above the value, it'll make it disappear. And if it's below the value, it'll keep it there. So we've got a black. And so you'll see, I don't know if I can get this slider in the, I'll just move the slider over here so we can see it. 
So you'll see as this guy gets lighter, this guy starts to disappear. So you see when it's totally white, it disappears, and when it's totally black, it's all there. So basically, what we're doing with this, this color here is we're fading, fading it out. We're making it go from white to black in a little bit of a different way with the gradient and making it disappear. So uh, let me show you how we do this real quick. So this is the texture that I imported, this gradient here. It's just a simple, it goes from black to white to black, like super simple gradient. And then I just rotate it with this rotate um, node so that it goes up and down, just like my UVs. I could have made it like that, but I was lazy and didn't, I guess. And so it's just got a rotate node, which is no big deal. Okay, then what we're doing is we're blending here with... So what I wanted it to do is go from black to this gradient here to white, which is what, what it does, but I'm going to show you how it works. Because I wanted it, the middle part of the explosion to disappear first, because you can see that. And that's how I set up the UVs, right? Well, this one, I, in mine I have it set up like this, so the, the middle part UVs are in the middle. So the white part affects the, the middle part first because it's brightest in the middle, right? And so what we're doing is we've just got a gradient here that's black to white. These gradients look really similar, actually. I might be able to just use one gradient, but that's what it is. So what we're doing is we're blending this gradient with the texture here with a multiply first and then with a lighten. So it's... So it, uh, let's just see if that works, actually. Let's just pull that one over there. Let's see if that looks the same. Nope, looks different. Okay, so that doesn't work, but it was worth a shot. So yeah, so this one literally just fades from black to the gradient, and then this one just fades from the gradient to white or from the, I mean, we're just going, yeah, more or less. The gradient happens about in the middle there. I mean, it looks fine, that's what I'm trying to say. So more or less, that's how that all works. And a couple of settings here. I have it on my Catalic, you could do Metallic or Specular, it probably doesn't matter. And then you want an opaque surface, we talked about that a little bit already. And your blending is alpha, not exactly sure what that does, but it's blend mode. And then two-sided, you can have it on and off if you want. Um, but you, So you can see both sides of it here, like you can see the back sides. Kind of makes your explosion a little more depth, gives it a little more depth, but you don't necessarily need the double-sided. Okay, um, and so now we've got our explosion slider. We want to feed that in when we're not testing it for the script work. Um, so metallic, I think zero looks good. Um, smoothness, zero and one, I don't, I don't know, they all look fine. That does not look fine though, so probably leaving it at zero is probably best. And then inclusion, you can do what you want with these, like, doesn't matter too much, I don't think. Okay, so that's how this node tree works. I know it looks complicated, but hopefully I did a decent job of explaining it. And we've got all these custom parameters up here so we can edit this in Unity to do what we want. Alright, so that's enough for this one, and I will see you guys in the next one.